Hi, Bumblebee. I'm so glad when I see you're here to help me with my words. Uh, hi, everybody. If you're here, uh, say hi and tell me where you're from. I'm always interested to see uh, where on the earth everybody's from. Hi, Brylan Farm. Hi, Diane. And Kiki's here. Hey, everybody. <clears throat> yes. Uh, well, the people here is are here that I know pretty good. Well, through YouTube. Let me give you an update on my sister. Uh, when she got up to walk today or with the uh, physical therapist, maybe it was yesterday, at last evening already, her knee kept buckling and she has not been able to walk. Her knee was, her leg was even numb for a while. That's probably coming back, but um yeah, it's not going as well as the first surgery did. So they're keeping her another day or two at the hospital. And I guess if it doesn't improve, you know, really well, she has to go to a rehab place to spend a little time for more enhanced uh, physical therapy. So she is so disappointed about that, and I just can imagine how she must feel. But we're nurses, both of us, and we're just plugging along, I guess. But uh, this morning, I couldn't get a hold of her, and I was frantically calling her daughter, and her daughter hadn't been able to get a hold of her. Then I was, really was worried. But finally, uh, my niece, her daughter, called me back and said she had talked to her and for me to call her. And she told me what was going on. So, yeah. So it's going to be a little bit of an extended recovery, it looks like. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. That was on my mind all day. I did get six things listed, but... It took me all day. What should have taken me 20 minutes or a half hour at the most took me all day. I couldn't keep my mind on anything today. Yeah. So uh, I want to uh, show you the last three bags from the uh, bag sale that I got because I want to get these hung up. And... Uh, I should go up after, I should go upstairs and take photos after I get done here. Uh, so I'll have things to list early in the morning tomorrow. Yeah. So somebody wanted to hear about some horses, but uh, I think we're going to I'll try to do a little bit. Uh, but we'll probably not as extensive as most of my stories are so let's get going i want to, i'm on Streamyard again as you see but i may come on in the next couple days uh well not tomorrow tomorrow has to be Streamyard because i have to share every sunday i do the whole what sold for the whole week and i show everything and do the numbers and everything so I have to sort of save uh, StreamYard for Sundays for sure. So I'm going to try again to do YouTube Studio. It was a little blurry last time, which I think, I thought for a while it's because of the camera on this computer. This is an older computer. This is probably, even though it's large, this is a large computer. It's an Apple Mac, but it's over 10 years old. It's probably maybe 12 years old by now. The camera, I'm sure, isn't as good as... Uh... But then I thought, <laughs> I'm using the same camera on StreamYard, so that doesn't make sense. There's a way on YouTube Studio to somehow use your, your camera 
like your iPhone camera, which is very good, um, instead of their instead of your webcam. But I don't know how to do that. And right now my head's too full and I can't learn anything else at the moment. Unless it's really easy. Another problem, I still can't get another solution would be just to do live video on YouTube. But on the can on my phone, I can't get it to do go on to landscape. There is a way. I just don't know how I got it to do it that one time. So there is a way. I just have to find out what that is too. So enough about the complaining stuff. Uh, yeah, I want to uh, go through these three bags. And I'm going to try to cut off the tags. There's little tags on the sleeves. And I'm going to cut them off at the same time I'm going to show you these. So that will save me uh, another job. As long as I have the things in my lap. Now this sweater, I thought I think is so pretty, and it's springy looking, but it's still a sweater, but it's cotton, and it's springy colors, and it's a quarter zip, uh, and it is by Talbots, and it's an extra large. So that's a good size for Talbots. Um, yeah, this is made in Hong Kong, which is good. I, I wonder if this is, uh, sometimes when things are made in Hong Kong, it means that they are vintage. So possibly, because uh, we do, most makers don't make things in Hong Kong anymore. You know, they're made in other places, like China. And other places. But Hong Kong, I'm not sure if they make things over there now as far as clothing, as far as the uh, brands of clothing. So this is long sleeve. And uh, yeah, it has a little cuff. But I think this is really pretty. This could go far. This, this could go far into spring as far as the coloring go. And it's cotton, so it's, uh, you know, breathable and cool. <clears throat> oh, I remember picking this up. This is kind of strange. This is another Ann Taylor. Um, this is, I think, polyester, but then it has this that whole strip in the middle of it, can you see that, is leather. This is all leather going down here. And the rim all around the neck is leather. And then on the back it has a keyhole and it ties at the back of the neck. So it's just sort of different. Uh, it has three-quarter sleeves. They had an, uh, an increased price on this. Their clothes were usually $5, and they had put $7 on this one. I don't know if it was because of the Ann Taylor brand or because of the leather. Uh, yeah. Cut this tag off. So, yeah. I got another top, the same color as that, that other sweater that I got. This is that little cardigan. Uh, evidently, people weren't buying cardigans because there were a lot of cardigans left there. Uh, this has little shell buttons, which I like. And this I picked up because this is silk. It's by Coldwater Creek. And it is uh, silk. It's a large. It's this coral color, sort of pink coral color. A little cardigan. Uh, yeah, it's very soft. 
Mexico. Nice start to the haul. Yeah, I think that's a really pretty sweater. <laughs> Poo Hiker. Glad you're here too. <clears throat> where are you from? Poo Hiker, where are you from? Uh, this looks, well, no, they're, I guess they're long sleeves. So far, pretty good. Uh, this is by, who is this by? Eddie Bauer, extra, extra large, and it's new with tags. Okay, it had a $49.50 that was reduced to $34.99. But uh, I'm not sure where the store It's the Eddie Bauer tag from the Eddie Bauer store. It's a sweater vest. Uh, extra, extra large. Eddie Bauer makes women's clothes too. So, I don't know. It doesn't look big enough to be a men's extra, extra large. So, I'm thinking it's a women's. But it's a beautiful color, you know, purple, my color. And it's all cable, sti cable stitch knit, front and back. So, this had been, they had raised this price to $10. Uh, so, that's... Uh, encouraging <laughs> that they thought it was worth more than uh, the regular price also yeah this is cotton and nylon oh it has 7% cashmere in it too and that is why it's so soft and it's also made in Hong Kong how about that I have to read some more about clothes made in Hong Kong. But I thought I did read that, that most of the time it, New England, ah. Uh, I went to New England on my honeymoon. <laughs> yeah, it was fall and we were trying to find the changing of the leaves. Shelly wine. Hi, I'm so excited to finally be home to see you. Well, I'm excited that you're here. Preppy and and little cardigans are trending strongly. Well, that's good. Preppy and bar barbie core, good keywords for the cardigan. Yes. Here's something feels like velvet. See, I've forgotten now what I bought. Land's End. And this is an extra large. This is a quarter zip. It's probably fleece, but it's so fine that it feels like velvet. And it is gray, dark, dark gray or almost black. So it's your, just your typical uh, long sleeve quarter zip fleece top by Land's End. Good, good large, extra large size. I get the tag. <clears throat> this may just pull off. I'll cut my hands if I do that. Okay. Twenty four in the chat. Wow. Shelly Wine, you're from Nebraska. Oh, that sounds like a cold place. Is that cold? Is it still really cold there? Ah. Oh. Okay, hey, that is the one bag. Now let me do this smaller bag here. 
This is, I think, an open cardigan. If I can get this round straight. Uh, this is by BCBG Mac Max Azria. It's a small and it's acrylic, but I got it because of the uh, southwestern print. It's black and gray. It's just open cardigan. Uh, yeah, I just thought it was, you know, sort of attractive. <laughs> uh, the brand is okay. The the uh, material isn't so hot, but uh, yeah. We'll see. This is another sweater that has a short sleeve. I don't understand that, like I said. And Silver Owl wrote me, she doesn't understand either why they put short or three-quarter sleeves on sweaters or jackets for that matter, she said. Yeah, if you put a sweater on, it's usually to get warm. Well, sometimes it's for style, we hope. Stein Johnson, you're here again tonight. Hi from Norway. Yes. Oh, first time you've been live. I've read your uh, your comments, you in the comments. Oh, because it's the middle of the night there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. That's right. You can't beat the prices. That's for sure. Yeah, Norway. Cool. I had a sale today that went, it's international shipping, but everything was in an uh, oriental, you know, script or whatever they call their, alpha, their writing. So I know it's going to some Asian place. <clears throat> yeah, it was a pair of booty shorts. <laughs> so that is that. I'm still not carry, buying, seeing. I thought I had another pair of shoes, but we'll see. We're almost to the last bag. This, I think, is, is really pretty. On the tag, it said two-piece. Now, the two-piece wasn't there. This Just this piece was there. But it's the outside piece. I mean, you don't necessarily have to have the inner piece for this. This is Talbot's Petites, but it's a small. It's that see, really see-through fabric. And I see this needs a little restitching here. Hope it doesn't come apart before I get to it. Uh, sort of three-quarter sleeves, but this is, see, it says two-piece, $14. Well, you can't see that. But it's really long. It's probably, let me see, it's to my knee. It's a, it's a long tunic length, and it's this olive color. It's a long open cardigan, and it has slouchy pockets. You see that right here on each side. It has splits on the sides. It's and sort of open stitching on the back there. It's just a nice looking uh, top. But unfortunately, I don't know what happened to the other piece. It wasn't there. But I will figure out what to, how to list this. Uh, I'll put this on the mannequin. It should look pretty good. <clears throat> I wish, I wish my granddaughter lived closer. Of course, she's a teenager. She wouldn't want to do all this, but maybe. She is like, she looks like a model, number one. And she would be the perfect one to model clothes. Wouldn't that be wonderful to have a live model? And another thing about this piece it's a hundred percent linen the only linen thing i think i found yeah you're not getting the idea of this i know but when it's listed it'll look better 
Uh, I love how you throw. She's uh, Bumblebee is so good at uh, keywords. Yes. Ah, uh, you're going to send a picture of uh, your kitty. Ah, yes, I'd like to see your kitty. Uh, hi, Shirley from Deb and Tom in the Adirondacks of New York. Home and away resell sellers. Yes, I looked at your, your uh, store. It looks great. <clears throat> Home and away resale. <clears throat> Let's see here. This sort of feels linen-y too. I hope this is because I think this is, yes, this is the J. Jill piece. But it's not J. Jill linen. So I don't know. I have to look. What This is uh, a nice sort of a slate blue. That's that same fabric that's you can almost see-through. Long line sweater. Let me see what this is made out of. This feels like the same. Well, it's half linen and half viscose. So that's good. Yes, I'm hoping. I don't know why this is still was still there. I'm hoping there's nothing horribly bad wrong with. Oh, here's why. Well, I think I can fix this. This is a pole. See this thread right here? I can take a little needle threader and I can pull that through that little hole and I think I can fix that. Uh, yeah, this is a small, but it's pretty large for a small. It's oversized. Okay, last bag here. This is the blazer. I think is so pretty. This jacket. And it's a Talbot's. And it's a size 12. And I'm going to have to try this on myself. It has some shoulder pads in it, which I like, because I have no shoulders. Uh, this is black. Two buttons, and the pockets are working pockets, and there's buttons. That button is there. It's just not buttoned. Buttons on each side. It looks almost a little bit military jacket type. Button this. Okay. I know black is so hard to see, but... Just a super nice looking jacket. It's all lined. Uh, they had $15 marked on this jacket in the store, in the thrift store. So there is the, uh, there's the tag, Talbot's size 12. And this is made in Italy stretch fabric and I'm thinking this was wool let me just see because I know I looked hoping it was yes 99% wool and 1% uh, spandex so this is a great jacket I'm not sure why it was still there so I'm hoping nothing is wrong with it when I go to photograph it because that's when you see everything <laughs> when it gets under the lights but I'm not seeing anything right now it looks uh, really really nice I'll try not to keep this <laughs> for myself All right, here's a uh, little vest, red vest by Karen Scott. It's, it's Karen Scott Sport. It's petite and it's extra large cotton and 
polyester. So it's a little bit qu quilted, but it's not like a down vest or anything. It's a fabric vest. It has zipper front and zipper pockets, and it's this bright red. Yeah. So a basic, uh, nice, extra large, good size. You know, I like to I like to wear vests. They're the perfect uh, thing when it's it's not freezing, but it's too cold not to put something on. So I wear lots of vests in the spring and fall for sure. <clears throat> now why can't I grab that little tag? I have got to go on Amazon tonight and order lens cleaners. You know, the little packets that you can put all over the house. Those little packets that you tear open and it's just one little cloth for your glasses. I ran out of them a while ago and I'm telling you, my glasses are always smeared. <clears throat> See, this is something velvet. See, I forgot already what I bought. I was just shoving things into the bags at this point. This is Dress Barn, woman 18 to 20, so a nice big size. And my favorite color, purple. Another little blazer vest, three button. Uh, has, I mean, yeah, three button. Has a little uh, detailing on the side there, like a fake buckle thing on the sides. But yeah, really pretty dress barn. Is that glaring? Can you see that at all? A dress barn, eighteen size eighteen twenty, a plus size, in this beautiful purple color that you can't really see. It's yeah, there is the color right there. Shoulder pads. Where is this made? This is made in Baharan. Did I take the tag off? No. This was marked up to $8. So when they think something is worth a little more than regular things that they get, they mark it up a little bit from $5. <clears throat> something else red oh yeah I picked this up for sure this is just um, MC sportswear it's hard to it looks like it may be a medium it's hard to read the tag but it's, it's a sweatshirt like I wear a lot, but this is a cat sweatshirt. So I always pick up things about cats because cat people love to wear things about their cats. So who oh, said about their cat here? Here is your sweatshirt. <laughs> it says, in sparklies, by the way, and this is an applique that's fuzzy says, cats are not our whole life. Cats make our life whole. So a nice little saying on a red sweatshirt that would be wonderful for all winter. Sort of getting out of the season for this right now, but that's your favorite. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. My daughter loves cats. Uh, she would like this too. <laughs> Hope I didn't take the tag off. Yeah. Cats are awesome. Yes. 
They certainly, I've always had cats. I've always had every kind of animal. I'll tell you, one time when the kids were probably in high school, we had two cats, two large dogs, a ferret, a rabbit, I think a bird, I think a parakeet at that time, but I'm not sure. The parakeet could have succumbed at that point. Uh, yeah, we had uh, gerbils. What else at that point? I think that's what we had all together at one point. And my husband always kept going around saying, this is like a zoo. <laughs> uh, you dress your cat for every holiday. <laughs> uh, cats usually don't like that. They don't uh, put up with it as much as dogs. Some dogs... They just look upset or sad, but they will put up with it. Cats are kind of, uh, let's see, we're going too fast here. We ordered our poly bags from Amazon. Yes. I order most everything. For a while, <laughs> the Amazon guy was coming here like daily. <laughs> He'd wave at me through the window. You have a neighbor's cat that visits you, yeah? I think half those pets were Shirley's. <laughs> well, yes. The dogs were, they were ours. You're right. The dogs were ours. The cats were, they would, would, um, we take in strays, of course. So we had two. I think they were both strays. And uh, of course, the ferret was mine. That was a really neat pet. I'll have to tell you about one time when it stopped breathing, what I did. Uh, my daughter tried to. Um, my, I think, was it a lizard or a snake she tried to raise? But when she, she found out that she had to feed it live little teensy mice, what they call them, she immediately took it back to the uh, pet store. She couldn't do that. Mm. He's not the biggest fan, but he does it to the cat. On the clothes, yeah. The biggest one of the group. Whoop, you're jumping around here. The biggest one of the group is a Newfoundland Bernese Mountain Dog mix. 145 pounds. My St. Bernard was 150. But, I, you know, he's gone now. Nicest, most gentle soul I've ever had. Yes, Newfoundlands. I, I've been so tempted because I knew of a uh, somebody that raised Newfoundlands, but yeah. My daughter's photographed Bernese Mountain Dogs before. <clears throat> yes, send me pictures of your cat in the clothes. Ah, uh, feeder mice, yep. Yeah, she couldn't do that. Your daughter's friend has an Irish hound. Oh, wow, he's huge. I'm not sure what an Irish, oh, Irish wolfhound? I do know what they are. <laughs> 29 in the chat. Your dog has passed on. Ah, uh, it's so hard. He's a box. He was a boxer and a red bone hound. Ah. James, oh wait. James on my born reseller life. He got a St. Bernard today. I am going to go look him up. 
Ferrets are hilarious to play with. Yes, they are. <laughs> they are really neat pets. Uh, they are a kind and gentle breed of dog. The Newfoundland, yeah, like the St. Bernard. A lot of big, big dogs are like that, unless they're guard dogs, real guard dogs, like Pyrenees. I think uh, Bryland Farm, don't you have, you have, don't you, do you have the Pyrenees? Is that what you said you had? Guard dogs uh, are not meant to be house pets, I don't think. They're meant to guard uh, animals outside. Yeah, wolf hunt. Yes, I did. I gave my, my ferret CPR. I gave my ferret mouth to mouth CPR and brought him back. And he lived a few more years. So I don't know what had happened to him. It's great how much he love. Yeah, I'll tell you. Yes, yeah, St. Bernard Pee Wee. <laughs> I love big dogs too. I, I've never had a small dog. In fact, Penny, she's out there. Penny actually is only 40 pounds. She's the smallest dog's, dog I've ever had. Usually uh, pointers, regular pointers are 60 pounds, around 60 pounds. But I had labs, mostly lab and uh, St. Bernard. Uh, Flat coat retrievers. Norma Jean, yes, you're showing up. <laughs> I'm just going back and looking here if I miss something. Uh, 30 in the chat. I think that's a record, isn't it, Bumblebee? You dog sit a little dog, and she's a yelper. That's the one thing about little dogs. Most of them are kind of noisy. I'll tell you, I think what turned me off to little dogs is my grandma Wickersham. That was my maiden name. My grandmother always had chihuahuas. Her, she had a long-haired chihuahua named Peggy. And she had a short-haired chihuahua named Chico. And both of them were mean as anything. We used to go over there in when we were in grade school. She was halfway between walking all the way home for lunch and going to Grandma's house for lunch. And I'm telling you, I don't know how many times we've been, we were bit, nipped by these little chihuahuas. Probably that's why I never really... Uh, Loved him. You have a long-haired chihuahua, but he's kind, kind of big, weighs 11 pounds. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, there are different, let me see here, Home and Away says, there are different sizes to look at and depends on what kind of clothes you are selling and shipping out. Yeah, if I remember rightly, you uh, you had all, you had both men's and women's, right? I'm not sure if you can send, you can just comment. I don't think you can send a picture and believe me I do not ha know how to share the screen except to uh, something that I have of my own on my own computer you you can probably sh do it but I just don't know how to do it yeah they do men and women clothes <clears throat> I think someplace on here or in my store, in the information, there's probably my email address somewhere if you search. 
uh, you could email me a picture. <clears throat> Okay, let me have a couple, another thing here I want to show you. This is the last item, and there was, there wasn't another pair of shoes, so I must have been dreaming about that size 10. I must have looked at it and then didn't get it. Ah, this is another J. Jill organically grown cotton. That's another thing, good thing to buy. Uh, this is a button cardigan with a v-neck like it looks like sort of you know how grandpa core type cardigan uh, it is a size extra large and it's in this sort of a slate blue color it looks purple on there but it's more of a slate blue by J. Jill so I'm hoping that when I photograph these things, they don't have horrible things wrong with them. This was marked up to $6. Probably because it's J. Jill. I did not go back to the store to look at their spring and summer things today. And, uh, but I will be going there. And to see what they have put out. Uh, yeah, the 13 by 10 inch poly bags for shirts, yes. Yeah, there's two specific sizes that are really good to use for, uh, for clothing when you're a reseller. Lots of people here today. I did promise somebody, and I don't know if you're here. Somebody wanted to hear about horses. Uh, I'm not sure if he's here tonight or not. But it was a man and uh, Grandpa Cor, yes. <laughs> uh, I will tell... Here's, I don't know if I said this last night, I don't want to talk yet too much about horses. My daughter just lost her horse not too long ago, and she, oh, the guitar guy, yeah, you're here. And she's watching my videos now. Uh, she didn't used to, but she is now because she's trying to get me more watch hours. I don't want to get her upset. She's just barely able to function from this happening. And um, so I'm not going to tell you about hers at all. I will tell you that my mother always said I always loved horses. In fact, one of my first words was sorky, sorky, which meant horsey. <laughs> And they always said that. And as soon as I could, uh, you know, I was getting out, was a little girl getting out uh, around the block. Somebody had a horse in a little barnyard. This was in the city, but there was still a lot that was big. And they had one horse. It was a white horse. And they just had a, had a uh, wooden fencing. And the horse would come up to you, you know, if you were walking by. So pretty soon I was sneaking carrots because I knew horses like carrots. I was sneaking carrots out of the house <laughs> and taking carrots and feeding it to the horse until my father found out. Now, my father grew up on a farm. They didn't have animals. They grew up on an orchard farm and, a, you know, grew food but 
all around him were horses and cows and everything. So he told me that I couldn't feed somebody else's horse because if that horse got sick, which is true to this day, of course, if that horse got sick, they might think that you, you know, gave them something bad. So I was never allowed to feed the horse again. And we have horses right now. I'm talking about present time. I have horses living across the street from me here, across the road. And there's three of them, and they come up to the fence. And along this road, in the summertime, we have walkers that will walk this road, you know. And there's they were there were a couple walkers, like there was a man and a woman in particular, and then a couple women that walk. And they would, once they saw the horses that would come up to the fence, they started bringing bags of things. And I saw them treating the horses. And I thought to myself, they really shouldn't be doing that, but I'm not going to go down and tell them they're not my horses. But finally, uh, the owner saw them and he uh, came up and talked to him. Very nice, of course. And he actually gave them a bag of horse treats that that are okay to feed his horses, which I thought was really nice. Yeah. Uh, animal talk is good. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. It was a horrendous thing. Uh, I will tell anybody, though, that, uh, that loves horses and thinks of getting horses. The least expensive thing in the horse world is when you buy the horse. The price of the horse, I don't care. Now, I'm not talking about buying a $500,000 race horse or something. I'm talking about everyday people buying horses, you know, for $1,000 or $2,000, whatever. That's the least amount of money you'll ever pay. Everything else costs more. <laughs> Your best friend is the vet and the farrier. They both cost a lot of money. And the third best person to have that... Uh, is the owner of the barn that you board the horse at. Now, most, some people own their own farms and have their own horses and take care of their own horses, but they better know a lot about horses because they are not easy animals to raise and to take care of. Yeah, everything about a horse is complicated. From feeding them, because remember, horses used to be wild. They know what to eat when they're wild. As far as, far as be, being a domesticated horse, it's not easy. There's all kinds of different hays. There's all kinds of different uh, amounts of sugar in hays at different times of the year. Some horses can't have a lot of sugar. Some horses, it doesn't matter. The grain, it's just so complicated to have a horse. They get a million different skin, things wrong with their skin. <laughs> and like I think I said last night, a horse is born and he spends the rest, or he or she, spends the rest of their time trying to kill themselves. They're very accident prone, uh, at least when they're domesticated. Yeah. Those are the few of the things that I, I will say how we, how I got started back into horses at the age in my fifties. <clears throat> uh, from my church, uh, there was some sign put up or something that uh, said that there was a class uh, going on called mares and menopause. And it was for older women that that loved horses, that wanted to learn to ride or to ride, you know, have the experience of riding horses. 
So right away, I told my daughter, because she already, both of my children are just like me as far as animals. My daughter has always loved horses. She has a collection of briar horses from when she was small. And uh, so we went to this class and that's what got us, us started into horses seriously and actually getting our own horses. Mares and menopause. <laughs> We took lessons in that barn for, I don't know, maybe a year or so. She went to another barn because uh, that instructor only taught on English saddles. And my daughter had just recently recovered from that horrible car accident that she had been in. And her balance was still not good. So she thought she would do much better in a Western saddle. And this instructor didn't teach Western. So she went to the next barn that we ended up in. Total, we were at four different boarding barns. Three good ones, one bad one. The last barn we spent the most time at, and because the owner of that barn knew the most about horses, and I never worried about my horse as when it was in that barn, ever. Uh, not to say that the horse didn't have things go wrong with it, but she at least knew when to call me, when not to call me. She always called the vet first and then me, which is exactly what I wanted her to do. So, yeah. So I will answer questions about horses if I know. I'm no expert, you know. I've just had horses. The experts were the people around me. Yeah. You learned more about chickens and possums than you thought you ever would. Well, yes. Your cousin raises horses. Very expensive. Yes, for sure. Uh, <laughs> my eBay store is called Rockford Trading Company. Rockford Trading Company. Uh, if I can put a link I'll put a link down here in the comments if I can do this before I no I don't want to go that page I don't think I'll lose you if I do this because I've done this before store. Okay. To paste, copy this, and then I will paste it down here. Okay, that's the link to my store down there. My eBay store. Rockford Trading Company. Now, Rockford was the name of our first English pointer. We named it, I named it Rockford. That wasn't its paper's names. My, this was the only papered dog we ever had. Uh, my, my husband bought it for a hunting dog. He bought it as a tiny puppy and gave it to me for my birthday. It's not that it was mine. Well, it ended up being mine, really. It was closest to me, but it was his hunting dog. It traveled all over North Dakota or South Dakota, wherever the pheasants are now. Anyway, what was I saying? Rawford was his name because he had, I have a picture. This is him on my phone. If you can see, his one eye was black and like a mask it was. So I named him Rockford. 
I don't know. It was like the from the detective Rockford was on TV way back then. Rockford, remember him? Yeah, I forget what his paper name was. It wasn't anything like that. But yeah, he was a great dog and one one uh, some ribbons at uh, field trials. Was a great hunter for sure. Yeah, pheasant and quail, my husband hunted. Yes, Rockford Files, right. <laughs> yes, I used to watch that. Shelly, you have an eBay store too? You're just getting started. Well, good. Just keep, just keep uh, adding to it and keep listing. That's what makes you sales. <clears throat> Our stockbroker, this is back when my husband was alive. He, he played the stocks. My husband was a gambler. He gambled on anything he could. And I think he thought the stock market was sort of like that. <laughs> but anyway, um, our, our stockbroker had a uh, stallion that raced in the buggy races. What do they call those? You know, where they pull the buggy races. I can't even think of what that's called now. Yeah. And when they were racing, uh, when he was racing uh, his horses here, because he had several horses, but he had a really good stallion. Uh, when they were racing here, close to here, he let me ride, well, not alone, but I ro rode in one of those buggies where you have to put your feet way out like this. And the, the driver really sat right next to me on the bar. But yes, that was an experience. That was kind of frightening. <laughs> harness racing, yes, harness racing. Yeah, I got to do that once. Mm. Yeah, I'll tell you, when you're sitting in that seat, when the horse is racing, you're real close to that, those back feet, those back hooves. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of scary. So, yeah, if anybody else, if anybody has questions about the horses, I would be glad to answer them if I can. But I don't want to talk too much about horses right now. So I think I'm going, I told, yes, I told the ghost story. Uh, it was back maybe it was this past, what, did, what is today? Today's Saturday. Is I think earlier in the week, was it? Someplace earlier in the week is one of the, uh, is the ghost story one. Just look back there, you'll, you'll find it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure you'd know if you heard the ghost stories. 33, yes, new high. Great. Thank you so much. I am so, James Garner, yes, in the Rockford Files. Yes. Yeah, you go back and watch. Thank you. I wrote down, I went and found how many uh, watch hours I have. Now they only, they only tell, redo this every few days, but I have 30, where did I write that? I wrote it somewhere on here, 3,515, 3,515, I need 4,000. But that has gone really fast because when I started doing this daily, I only had like 1,500 watch hours. So I've more than doubled it since then. 
Uh, yeah, I'm I'm very close. Yeah. Yes, in the next couple, well, not tomorrow, but uh, it's supposed to rain and be awful tomorrow. But then next week it's supposed to get nice. So sometime next week, I'm going to take my camera and I'm going to Goodwill and I'm going to Aldi because I have to go there. Thank you, Judy. <laughs> and do some more uh, videotaping or video, whatever they call it now, with the GoPro. You miss living in Arizona where we didn't need to change times. Yes, that is a pain. And I thought they were talking about not doing away with that. But I haven't heard any more about it this lately. So have they given that idea up? Yeah, I wish they'd stop that too. Not only do I have trouble with it now, but my dog, you know, they can't get used to it because the feeding times, they still go with the, I think they finally got used to their five o'clock feeding time finally now, and now it's going to change again. So it's, yeah, it's rough on them too. <laughs> so I'm going to close for tonight. Oh my goodness, it's 8.30 already. I'm going to close for now. I will be back tomorrow at 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock. Because that's the day on Sundays I do uh, the what's sold for the whole week. And I tell you the numbers and everything. So that's what Sundays are. So I will be back tomorrow at 4 o'clock. And I don't know what time it will be in Norway. At our four o'clock, I'll have to. I'll have to ask Alexa. <laughs> She'll tell me. So good night to everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. You make my day. Bye.